Why fit in when you were born to stand out? That is one of the best questions that we can ask of ourselves, originally asked by Dr. Zeus. And there are times when we want to be noticed and we want others to be interested in us or our work. And even if we might not naturally be the centre of attention or a born entertainer, we can still change our actions to gravitate people towards us. And how to stand out without causing a scene is a question I've always thought about and developed a lot of answers to as someone who was naturally an introvert at school and um, have definitely changed how people perceive me. And also how to manage your energy and not overdo things when you're trying to get attention is an important lesson. And all of these things are the topics to be covered today. Hello and welcome to the Growth Mindset Podcast. I am Sam Webster-Harris and we're diving into some of the lesser talked about ways to make yourself more interesting. We are going to start with how to create more interesting interests and thus more interesting knowledge and then any opinions or content that you might want to share. And I will use an analogous story from two of my other favourite things, physics and running. Now, I love running as a tool to explore new areas. And lately, I can't run that far anymore as I'm recovering from a stress fracture, which um, ironically is from running too much. <laughs> but I am restricted to five kilometres maximum. And that has an amazing effect on the amount of area that I can explore, which is just maths. If you imagine when you start going for a run, you have a start point and you can run in any direction from the start point and come back. If you run five kilometers, the most that you can do is 2.5 kilometers away from the start and then the same back. So if you draw a line around you, all 2.5 kilometers away, you'll end up with a big circle around you with you in the middle. And that circle is the area that you have to explore. If you double the radius of a circle, so you run 10 kilometers instead of 5 kilometers, the area of the circle and the potential places to be visiting is four times bigger. So the amount of things that you can explore grows much faster than the amount of time spent running. And a daily 5 kilometers gives me 75% less things to be exploring than a 10 kilometers. And because I'm a weirdo, I sometimes do a marathon on a Sunday, which is 44 kilometers. That's almost 10 times further than a five kilometer run. And if you 10 times the radius of a circle, you get 100 times more area. Now, why am I talking about maths and running? Well, for creativity, that really shows just how much more interesting the content that we might want to make could be. When we go 10 times further deeper into a topic, it actually becomes a hundred times more interesting because there's so many more explored things that people wouldn't have been able to know otherwise. Because if you only explore the initial ideas in a topic and you're doing like short miles, like my running, it would make it very unlikely that you're going to find out something that people haven't already heard before. Like a short philosophical tweet is basically just a quote that someone can get anywhere. A 30 minute podcast interview with someone that no one's met before, it'll probably just be that person's first basic ideas. And those aren't new unexplored territories. And instead, what you should try and do is really go much deeper into some topics and choose a topic area and week in, week out, go really far and make something genuinely valuable. And if you research an area deeply and then you start giving some reason like a long tweet storm or a blog or podcast, it goes much further than the surface level ideas. I've certainly found that a lot with the kind of content that I want to consume. Uh, one of my favorite podcasts is the Dissect podcast where the host breaks down literally every single detail of an album over an entire series and it'll take him four episodes just introducing the backstory of the album and the artist and then once he's done the introduction he'll then dedicate an entire episode to each song with its chord progressions, samples, lyrical analysis and if you're into that artist it's it's unstoppable to listen to this podcast whereas if it's just someone having a half hour chat about an album it's like great I could have heard that content anywhere I could have had that chat with my mate it's not really giving me that much more interest. And if you think about a book, well, someone spent years making an entire book on a topic. And you might be like, okay, Sam, what about things like some of the popular interview podcasts? Like Stephen Bartlett or Tim Ferriss, they interview some people and they're all famous and I'll listen for a whole hour. Well, these people are really famous. And when Stephen Bartlett or Tim Ferriss interview someone, they also study the guests that they're having on and they'll go really quite deep into their background and they'll prepare questions that go past the boundary of everything we already know about that person. And so these interviews explore new territory of a famous person that we love. And that's a really compelling listen and more interesting than an interview with someone where you just explore their initial ideas. 
So essentially what I'm saying is if you're going to go into something, try and just go very deep and geek out. If you're only making short content or consuming short ideas around things, you're not going to ever have any deep learnings or be able to educate people. And you're not creating things that people haven't seen already. So explore deeply. And if you geek out, really try and go a bit further because you can take people on a journey worth following along for. And remember that if you two times your depth, that's four times your interest. But if you 10 times your depth, that's 100 times your interest. So don't be mediocre when you can be obsessive. And okay, you maybe don't want to start a podcast or run a YouTube or be creating content yourself, but it's still a great way to upgrade the quality and interests of your interest. Like I said, it, it genuinely seeps into your daily life. Last week, I was at a dinner with some friends and one of them was interested in his microbiome and gut health. And I did an entire podcast season on the body on my Wiser Than Yesterday podcast last year. And he ended up asking me questions for hours about different things he was just sort of perplexed by. And I don't know, questions like why his poo turns green sometimes and how a sphincter works. And I was really fascinating for him because of I was actually able to talk to him about these things. And it was a very odd but interesting conversation that was possible because of I slightly geeked out in an area. <laughs> My curiosity served me well. Moving on to the second big topic area, how to become more interesting within yourself and relax and grow into your own unique flavor of weirdness. Essentially, how can you break out of society's concepts of how you think you should behave and connect with who you actually are? Facing fears of what we think we should do is one of the most effective things that you can do. And I've noticed it a lot lately of the happiest people I know are just too busy being themselves to worry about fear or anxiety of who they think they should be. And it makes them so much more interesting to be with. Like, who doesn't want to hang out with a confident, happy person that defines their own path? So I've got some stories of ways I've tried to embrace facing my fears with more unusual ways of doing stuff lately that felt very scary to do. But actually, they really increased my confidence and made people more interested in me. That might give you some ideas of ways to just be a bit more odd, but in like a funny way that will make your life happier. So I've mentioned I've been looking at world records lately, and I found quite a few space hopper themed world records. And if you don't know what a space hopper is, they are those giant balls that you sit on and bounce around in the garden and you look very silly. They're, they're pretty useless as a form of transport. But I want to try and break some world records like the fastest marathon on a space hopper or maybe the fastest speed record for a mile using one. And that means I've had to use them outside of a garden on a road and in bike lanes. And, and I'm bouncing around trying to like do a full few miles on one of these things, looking like a bit of an ass. And before I started doing it, I just felt kind of naughty or like it would just really annoy people because it's, it messes up bike lanes for cyclists because if you're going super slow and you're just bouncing around like a silly idiot and then cars hate bikes already. So surely a guy sitting on a space hopper is clearly doesn't need to be on a space hopper because why would you ever use it to, to transport yourself because it's slower than walking. Um, I just kind of assumed it would be annoying <laughs> and I didn't want to do it. <laughs> but instead, when I finally got, like worked up the courage to start space hoppering around, then <laughs> people loved it. I just had people coming up to me telling me that I'd made their day because I looked so silly. And I had people stopping in their cars to offer me lifts and, and no one cared in the slightest that I was choosing a ridiculous mode of transport or getting in the way they were just really happy and it was really odd but made me super confident and made my day really nice and people found me very interesting and uh, that was an example of something that in my head was like oh my god I'm really scared to do this and actually went really well and then again a very similar experience last week I attended the web summit tech conference and there's like 70,000 people there, loads of startups and investors. They go there to make business deals, find out about the leading edges in technology. And it's a, it's a cool place and also quite stressful. Lots of startups trying to find investors and they're getting judged and they kind of need to perform and sound really cool. And what I did is I wore a bright pink dress and walked around interviewing people there about their mental health, burnout, expectations for their business. and often went on to large tangents about mindset, sexuality, existential life thoughts. And before I did it, I was again really scared about the idea of wearing a dress as a straight guy who for some reason decided that he wants to wear a dress more often. 
because it's not really natural for me to do that. But I just thought that men sometimes look nice in dresses. So why should I care about society telling me to do what I should do? And um, it actually really worked very well. People just were immediately at ease with a crazy guy in a pink dress who has put himself out there. So like whatever they were doing, they were like, they're not going to be as weird as me. So it was fine for them to just let go of all of their stress of trying to like conform whilst they're at the conference and just kind of relax into themselves. And so I had some really candid conversations with so many people there who um, just felt the ease from the pressure of the conference that they're in, that they could hang out with me, this kind of slightly odd guy who was just genuinely interested in hearing about them as individuals. And just like the visual component that I had going on with the dress made me more of myself and it made it so easy for others to open up. And so again, I was so scared about doing this because I've never really worn a dress in public and I had no idea what to expect exactly. But the reaction was so positive and I had random people just come up to me to tell me how nice I looked or that they just respected me. And, and I was like, whoa, it was not ready for that. So I'm not saying you should wear a dress if you're a man, although it turns out it's great. The point here is that if there's anything that you feel is a bit socially awkward or that you're scared of doing, if it intrigues you, just try it. Like, try and do it in a safe, smaller way if you can and build up to the bigger ideas. But generally, we assume much worse things will happen than actually happen. And it might well be that it'll be 10 times more positive than you could even imagine. So trying out some of my weird internal ideas is definitely pushing me to be more out there and it's just making me inherently more interesting to others. So as I'm getting my positive reinforcement to do this, it's making me just feel a lot safer to embrace more of myself and have fun. And I'm making friends in the process. So I really think that could help a lot for any of you out there who <laughs> feel like you're not quite being your true self. Okay, some great tips on how to be more interesting and be more yourself and get people to actually see you for who you are. So finally, I want to discuss the topic of Finding the right balance if you're working hard to be noticed or to be interesting. Because in our hustle culture of achievement, we want to excel and stand out as the best, etc. And especially with the world of YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, you have to be different to stand out. And adopting this mentality is great, but it has downsides and it can even limit our overall success if we're just trying too hard all the time. And sometimes it actually can really serve us to just kind of hide in mundanity and not try and just blend into the background. So I, just, I was on a plane recently and an air hostess, she put some like crazy energy into just making like a really amazing safety drill. And she was funny. She called people out and thing. And it, she just added some drama to it. It got a lot of attention and I really liked it. And I'd love to think if I was an air hostess, I would be like that. But for the overall safety of the passengers, it was a lot of effort. And let's say the air hostess had had a long day, like they probably have every day. They could just relax. They could be mundane. No one really watches the air hostess safety talk. And it doesn't matter. The air hostess has still ticked their box. They've done the job. And so it's very easy for them to relax and they still actually get 90% of the benefit and it doesn't really matter. And I've just been thinking about so many ways where you can try too hard and it doesn't actually matter. So like I just... I really like to make people feel special. And let's say a friend on LinkedIn or Twitter has got a post and I want to comment on it. I can wind myself in knots wanting to write like the most magical two line comment that's going to make them feel super special. But 30 minutes later, I can still be there seeking this perfect comment that is just really a waste of my time. And I could just go with like a stock kind of answer like, yeah, totally agree, mate, or you've got this. And it's kind of a mundane way of adding my support but it's a pass. It ticks a box. It's still being kind of useful. And it frees me up to support more friends that maybe have things that I should be commenting on, as opposed to wrapping myself in knots. And a similar example is I have a friend who over prepares a lot. He's got like a type A personality. And he has a lot of meetings. So he does serious preparation for all of his meetings. So he can show up and just be like an absolute boss. But that's kind of draining when he has lots of meetings. Looking at it analytically, at least half his meetings are not that critical. So it's better to add his wow factor for just the meetings that matter and then show up and be kind of relaxed at the other meetings. It's just perfectly sufficient to get most of the benefit and it's a pass, ticks the box, it's fine. And that means that it frees himself up to 
rest more and do better work when it matters. So basically we have a concept of like standing out versus chilling out. And I've always loved the 80-20 rule for a, since forever. And I'd never really considered it in terms of energy spent when trying to stand out. But I really think this is a perfect use case for the 80-20 rule. And I do pride myself on being unusual. My identity is the black sheep who sags when others zig. And I feel like being normal does go against my nature, but it actually can be unhelpful to always try. <laughs> and so sometimes just being super boring can be fine. And whoever you are, remember that it's okay to just chill out and be average when you feel like it. And often it might even be a lot better for you and help you manage your energy to be more interesting and stand out more when it matters. So I think that's a super important point when you're thinking of ways to be more noticeable. Are you doing it for a legitimately useful reason or are you just doing it because it's part of your ego and identity? Ultimately, the best way to be more interesting is to be uniquely yourself. And a final tip I really love from Ryan Holiday is the quote, what can only I do? There has never been anyone like you and there never will be again. You've been given a complete and total monopoly over the business of being yourself. Your main thing is not to give that up, to be you, to do what only you can do. Hopefully some ideas that you haven't heard of before, because I haven't really heard most of these before. So if I have just copied someone without knowing, I'll be annoyed, but that's fine. Now, obviously, being a unique individual, I do not like asking people to rate or comment on my podcast. But 20,000 people listen to this podcast each week, and yet only 150 have left me an iTunes rating, so this could be your chance to be unique and leave me a rating. So, you know, just a gift there to start you off on your unique journey. I hope that didn't come across salesy. As a quick update, if you feel like watching me fail to break world records or running around tech conferences in a dress talking to people, I do now have a YouTube and it would be lovely if you wanted to watch any of my videos. So if this has helped you and enjoyed this, you might like my newsletter called Explosive Thinking, where I dive into mindsets, creativity and the existential point of anything. And as I like to remind you, nothing should be easy. But if you want to enjoy your life, that starts with enjoying today. Bye.